So today we're going to be touching on a series of bikes which lots of people ask for and I'm honestly surprised um, that you can order still but we're going to tell you about the 2021 Trek Excalibur models and we'll touch on whether one of them even exists anymore. Let's talk about the Trek Excalibur models. Trek Excalibur has been the long-standing entry-level point into a more aggressive cross-country mountain bike. The beginner mountain bikes are the Trek Merlins, as you can watch on previous videos. But when you actually get into serious kind of cross-country racing or you're looking to get more speed on the trails, your eyes will start turning towards the Trek Excalibur. Why is everyone talking about the Excalibur? That's because honestly, it's a great lightweight option for anyone looking to get into cross country racing. Although it is a bit of a slowing down sport in a way, the World Cup is still gonna happen. Cross country racing is still a thing. Majority of people go for the more down country bikes now like the Roscoe or the Fuel EXs. But for that lightweight crowd who just want an affordable, which is key word here, lightweight option the Excalibur is great currently on their website they have three models the Excalibur 7 8 and 9 as with all Trek models the 7 is the lowest and the 9 is the highest end on the 7 you are gaining a nice Judy SL front fork and this is air spring which is excellent keeps that weight down and it's going to be a responsive front fork as you go to the 8 you get the exact same front fork no changes there both of them manual lockout when you go to the 9 though you do get an upgraded front fork with remote lockout so the front fork is still the rock Sox duty but it goes from the sl to the silver edition i don't really know the full differences but in general terms, it will perform better. Normally the actuation is gonna be smoother, is gonna be more efficient, even when not locked out and handling the change from little bumps to big bumps, and that's the big changes. As you go through each three of them, there isn't much change in the suspension. They're all relatively the same, and that's because it's an affordable but lightweight front fork. These are all 120 mil bikes, so they're not looking for these crazy, outrageous spec forks that you see on other bikes you're really just looking for a lightweight efficient one the 7 and the 8 have that Judy SL and the 9 have the Judy Silver the big difference is the remote lockout and not remote lockout if you really want that remote lockout you're gonna have to spend the money and go to the 9 all right so we've done with the suspension pretty simple in that terms of things the shifting though on other hands they they went all out on so throughout all the models they changed pretty drastically in previous years there have been a two by option but this year they've got rid of that completely in the entry level excalibur 7 they have a simple 1 by 10 dior which this is an excellent shifting set it works really well but you are missing a bit of the range and especially if you're looking at racing or being a bit more competitive or just competitive with yourself that 1x10 might not have every gear you want possible or be able to take on the challenges um, which you might be looking to do that's where the 7 comes in with that SRAM SX as we all know the SRAM SX is an excellent 1x12 gear range huge range to it it does an excellent job it isn't the lightest weight setup though and that is a downside when you are purchasing essentially your first XC race bike that's where the 9 comes in they have actually improved it pretty well and they've gone to the SLX 12 speed so this is right in between the XT and the XTR it's this weird like nobody really knows where SLX fits in it's lightweight and it shifts really fast it's faster than the SX and it's going to cut a ton of weight off but be more budget friendly than something with the XTR or I'm not even sure if it's on top of the XT or below it's somewhere meshed together with it it's good and it's light and it's responsive and it's 12 speed and that's what you're looking for in an XT race bike and that's why again the Excalibur 9 wins especially if you are looking to push yourself in the race scene when you are looking at the brakes though not too much changes throughout the models the 7 and the 8 
both come with the MT200 brake setup. This is the same which the Marlin 7 has, the same that the Fuel EX5 have, and the same that the uh, Dual Sport 4 has. It's an excellent brake setup. It's really well used everywhere. It's gonna be super easy to maintain, super cheap to find parts because they're everywhere. Tons of bikes seem to have this as a breaking the budget, but not breaking the budget brake set. That's a good explanation, I think. It will stop you, it stops you really well. There's obviously higher end out there, but for some reason, the MT200 seem to be this go-to for all companies um, affordable but really well responding brake set. When you jump up though to the XCAL 9 again, big change where I believe it's the MT4100. Let's check that. I was right, MT4100 lever and the MT410 caliper. This is a big upgrade. It will have a lot more stopping power to it, less brake fade. It's going to perform significantly better than the MT200. So, so again, the Excalibur 9 wins by a long shot. And this is why we have to talk about, about the Excalibur 7. Honestly speaking, it makes total sense that they are most likely 100% gonna get rid of it for the next year, for the model year 2022. Many of the per specs on them are kind of the most base level entry setup you can get. So why not cut that price down a little bit and put it on a Merlin frame. You're already manufacturing the Trek Merlin frame in mass. You already have a lot of people who want a comfortable cross-country bike with all these specs. So upgrade it to a 1x12, stick a Merlin sticker on it, make it a little comfier, and there you have it. Now the Trek Merlin 8 is coming out. They're gonna get rid of the Excalibur 7. The 8 is gonna be their entry-level cross-country frame. The 9 is going to be a high performance cross country aluminum frame and then you will move on to the Pro Caliber series which with the 9.5 brings you this perfect range of build up of bikes instead of having so much kind of questionable crossover it just simplifies their whole lineup. So good for you Trek, get rid of the one which nobody cares about and just bring out a bike that people love. The Trek Merlin guys love the Trek Merlins. They're a comfortable, high performance to the degree of what they're doing bike. So get rid of the Excalibur kind of fanciness to it, make it a little more simple and bring out the Merlin 8 and just leave it to the Excalibur 8 and the Excalibur 9. When you break it down to just those two bikes, you really do just have a simple choice. Spend the money and get all the features and everything you need out of an XC race bike or just time trial king for your own personal sake or get a nice lightweight with upgradability with that tapered headset with the Excalibur 8. Don't worry too much about Excal 7 if you want one and you can get your hands on it I'd recommend doing it this year but going forward it to makes total sense why they may be getting rid of it. All right I'm sorry I don't have any of those to show you again most of them are sold out pre-sold or not even coming for us what a wacky year in bikes. Hopefully this helps you out a little bit. If you can get your hands on one, I definitely would do it. If you were already gonna be buying the Excalibur 7, and I've heard a few reports um, in my comment section below that they've actually been bumped to a Merlin 8, I wouldn't be bummed out. I mean, yeah, you could buy the Excalibur and because it's got the tape ahead tube, you've got more upgradability, but you're better off just switching to Excali and getting that better part spec anyway, especially because the 2022s haven't been released in that. I'm sure there's some changes there. Wouldn't be surprised if that went to the Dior 12 speed and then the SLX stayed the same, but that's all hypothetical. All right, comment down below if this helped you out. If not, subscribe anyway and like it anyway. I don't know. All right, guys, thanks. Good luck.